Hi. So I'm just a hobbyist in the electronics hobby here in the Arduino world and everything. So this video may be common knowledge to others, but I had a hard time finding this information. So I thought I'd make a video about uh, what I found and uh, maybe it'd be used to others. So I've been uh, playing around with uh, little AT Tiny 85 projects and uh, some of them I've made into custom circuit boards and then things like that. But uh, the latest one I was working on is uh, um, like a tree shaped board that'll play Christmas buzzer music and blink some LEDs. So um, um, one of my favorite people that I uh, get my information from is fellow over at Technobloggy. And uh, so this was going to combine two different uh, uh, of his projects that he did. One was playing notes on the AT Tiny 85. It's a really minimal function that uh, allows you to, uh, uh, you know, do uh, play notes. So you can uh, import like uh, Christmas music, like buzzer music from the things. That's what I wanted to do with it. And plus, I wanted to flash LEDs, and you have limited pins on the um, uh, AT Tiny 85. But he also has this thing where you can Charlie Plex 12 LEDs on four pins. So you have the fifth pin still available for the buzzer. And uh, um, both those projects, I wanted to combine them into my. Uh, musical Christmas tree PCB that I want to make. Anyhow, um, I struggled to put these two together because both of them are using timer one. The AT Tiny 85 only has two timers, timer zero and timer one. And then it used, both of them use timer one. Timer zero is usually used for millis and micros and by extension uh, delay most times. And uh, that's where I ran into the problem. I needed to uh, uh, need an extra timer basically and just didn't have it. So um, I Technobloggy is uh, recommends to use the uh, AT tiny core on the Arduino uh, thing. And uh, I decide, well, the best thing to do is go to the core and uh, start looking at some of the documentation. And uh, there's lots of it there. And it took a while. And, uh, you got text and then you got code to go over as well. So this is pretty much, this is, I thought I was sank when I read this line here. As, searching for you know the delay how to what because the notes you got to have a delay in there to um uh, uh use them so you still need a needed delay because you know they notes have a certain duration and everything and the uh, timer timer one on that project was used to create the tone frequencies and uh, on the Charlie Plex ones, you need the timer just to uh, interrupt the program to so that you can uh, uh, go over those leads because to get the 12 leads to work, you're only lighting each one um, for one quarter of the time. And you have to do that fast enough that you don't see blinking. So um, that his project was uh, interrupt driven, but unfortunately, like I said, both used interrupt one or uh, timer one. And uh, so that's why, but I still needed the delay for the music for playing the tone. So I thought I was sunk. So it says, um, this means reconfiguring timer zero by manipulating its registers will break millis and delay so look like 
timer zeros out of the picture if you still if you want to use millis or delay in your program. Uh, so anyhow, I was searching down and uh, a little bit farther down here. I come up. You have the option on that uh, AT Tiny Core. You have the option to disable millis and micros. I said well, that doesn't sound. You know, if you don't have any millis and you don't have any micros and you don't have any delay in your program, how in the world are you going to get it to do any timing thing? But then if you read through this, you're disabling millis and micros, but delay still works. <laughs> I said, well, how is that possible? So, and um, like I said, it may be common knowledge, but I had to dig into the code and uh, find out how this is even possible that, it, that it, you know, how does delay work? It says a couple paragraphs up that if you mess with timer zero, you uh, uh, mess up your micros and your, your uh, millis and your delay. And down here it says, well, delay will still work if you disable millis. How in the world is that working? I, Actually, didn't go into this part of it. I just tried it because it says it <laughs> said it still worked, and it did work. And uh, this was just an afterthought that was tugging at my brain. How does delay still work if you don't have millis working? So I went in and I found it out. So let's go back in. Uh, this is into the core, tiny core, and it's the wiring.c file. That's where you find all your basic functions that your uh, Arduino uses. And here's the void delay function that we call. And um, <clears throat> so if you um, call it normally, it looks like just about, it looks the same as if we used our, uh, uh, they're using micros, but if, Mill current millies, our blink without delay thing is they're just counting up millies until it's time to um, jump back out of this. Is that's how they do the delay? And I said, well, they're using micros or you know micros and millies. I said, well, what's that about? But then if you go down here a little bit, that there's an else. That was an if else, I guess, and this is an else. And if disabled millis is set, no need to use millis, micros, we do it a different way. I said, okay, well, that's kind of weird. So then on here for, to get, when you don't have millis or micros, you're doing this and you're just uh, using delay microseconds. I thought to myself, delay microseconds. I've heard of that, but why is that any different than you know the other the regular delay but then you go down a little bit and we get into delay microseconds and that's actually a interesting read here for each clock you know you can set your um uh your um at tiny 85 at different clock speeds and this actually covers different chips as well so they got 24 megahertz, up to 24 megahertz in here. But if we go down to 16 megahertz is what I'm running mine at. Here we go. So this is the section that deals with if else the, or else if that we deals with that. And it's kind of cool. So to get a delay microsecond, all they're doing is bit shifting looks like they're shifting um this in here and it says it simply return the overhead of this function call returns will take 14 to 16 cycles which is i'm not sure why they got it 16 in parentheses cycles which is one microsecond. So all they do is they actually just to get a one microsecond, they figured out what kind of, uh, you know, little assembly line code or bit, you know, register shifting or whatever they're doing that's going to uh, 
create the microseconds that they need. And uh, they just do this, do nothing, uh, fun, you know, code. And then it takes a microsecond and they return. And that's how they get their microseconds. I thought to myself, wow. So each one of these are doing something different on here, you know, to get the different microseconds and everything and how many cycles at different speeds you need. Um, like if we were running it at 8 megahertz, let's go down to 8. So there's 6. There's 8. 8 megahertz. So they're saying they're saying well they're saying that this 14 cycle code takes two microseconds so they're just returning it and somehow they get half a half of it or something so they can return a single microsecond as well so instead of worrying about clocks and everything else they're just using they know that the system's clock is running and how long it takes to do a few of these uh, super low level operations and they do enough of them to add up to a microsecond and that's when they and they just do that in return so i thought that was very interesting so just to show you if you never Played with AT Tiny 85s. Um, like I said, you go to tools here and you get your board. And like I say, I go to this AT Tiny 80 AT Tiny cores. The one there's other cores that the that you can use uh, for that, but this is a fairly new core and it works out very well. But you just pick your board and everything, and once you do that. And you got these other things come up and you can, this is where you disable millis. So you don't have millis or micros, but I wasn't using them, but uh, you do end up with still being able to use the delay. So that was kind of fun. So um, anyhow, if anybody's into AT tinies and the AT tiny core, um, and you don't know how to use how to get access to both clocks at the same time and still run your program with delays this is the way to do it anyhow i thought this was a something that i didn't know and i figured i'd put it out there for others in case they want need to look it up too hopefully i'll give it a title that make it eventually accessible from google because Google was kind of slim on giving me results for that. Anyhow, talk to you later. Thanks.